Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is that time of month again. It is time to sit down, talk about the books I read in the previous month, drink some coffee, and yeah, just let you know my thoughts, my opinions, five star reads, DNFs. There's actually two DNFs in October, one five star read, and overall, just a good time. I would say I had a pretty good reading month. Like I definitely enjoyed the majority of the books I was reading. I did start like two new series which is honestly all my fault i'm trying to not start new series especially too many fantasy romances but that is exactly what i did this month but that's okay because i had a lot of fun so anyways without further ado let's get into the books that i read in october so starting off i read glint by raven kennedy this is the second book in the plated prisoner series this is sort of like a darker fantasy romance but it's not dark in the way that like a dark romance is it's more dark in the themes it discusses and just like certain events that happen if that makes sense but it's not dark in the way that it's like smutty does that make sense i really hope so i really enjoyed the first book which is guild but for some reason the second book i just felt moved so slow and i just feel like we were at the same setting for so long like there was no change of scenery for like i swear two-thirds of the book like we were just at this one place and this is definitely a filler book and i know that it needs to happen in fantasy romance i know that sometimes you'll get a filler book but they're just kind of annoying sometimes just because i'm like i need a bit more action however i know for a fact well it, actually i don't know for a fact but it better be this way the third book in the series i think is gonna pop off <laughs> i really hope so just because the first book was definitely action-packed and it was sort of moving in a way where you can tell where the series is gonna go this one was kind of like yeah just a filler book but the way that it ended tells me that the third book is gonna be like action-packed crazy and just like lots of transformation lots of changes i'm really hoping that's the case it really better be to be quite honest <laughs> I did read this in a reading vlog, but I completely forgot what I rated it in that vlog. But my current feelings towards it is that it is a 3.5. It was definitely good, it was entertaining. And the nice thing about it is it has really large font. So you definitely fly through the book in that way. It just moved a bit too slow for me. We were in the same setting for too long and I just wanted a little bit more. And also the like romance, there wasn't really much of like a romance here. It's sort of simmering, so I think it's gonna you know, be a bit more action-packed in that way in the third book. But yeah, it was okay. Like, it was good. I just wanted it to be better. <laughs> and then moving on to one of my DNFs of October, I attempted to read Lioness by Emily Perkins. Now, this is a literary fiction or is it general fiction? I actually don't know. It won a prize, which is interesting. No, <laughs> it's hard to explain. The writing was good but I really disliked the characters and I honestly just could not care for them. And because of that, I had to DNF it like halfway through. It's actually funny because I was buddy reading it with one of my friends and this was a book we decided to read at the same time. And I messaged her halfway being like, I'm sorry, I can't continue. Like go on without me if you want to, but I'm gonna have to leave you and love you because I just can't do it. Leave you and love you? No, I'm gonna have to love and leave you. Yeah, that's the saying, I think. I always get my sayings wrong. I'm one of those people that like muddle up sayings all the time. Sometimes I make up my own sayings and to me, I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. Anyways, back to this book. So this book follows, I think like, is she in her 50s? Yes, this woman in her 50s and she came from like a very, very humble upbringing, very humble background, sort of like a lower class working background, but she marries into money. So she marries a man, I think 20 years her senior, because he's 70 in this book and she's 50, but he has a very successful business, super, super, super successful, like a property management kind of business or they're building businesses. What the hell did he do? Yeah, basically they have like an empire building family. This book is set in New Zealand. Now, the one thing that I really enjoyed about it was that it was set in New Zealand and I knew all the cities and when she would like reference certain things, I knew exactly what she was talking about because I'm also from New Zealand. I need coffee first, hold on. What kind of happens is her husband's family business 
kind of is a little bit corrupted and things start to kind of come undone and basically his business goes Ooh, and yeah that's kind of what happens what's sort of happening in this book is her going through some sort of like transformation mentally having been married to this man and like you know included in his family for so long she got very much used to the lifestyle that he was offering and she obviously changed because of that and so when his business starts to crumble it kind of forces her to confront herself and just how she became this way i honestly just could not care for the characters like i really couldn't and like his family i could not stand his family like his children they were so annoying like the whole family actually just pissed me off so <laughs> i had to dnf it honestly just because i really could not care what happened to them or the business like i was just so checked out so tapped out reading this book it was just like words on paper because i just couldn't care and as soon as you don't care for the characters you don't care for the book at least in my experience so yeah i dnf this book maybe i can't remember maybe like a hundred pages in who knows anyways moving on and then i read <laughs> the fun i had reading this book oh my god then i read a court this cruel and lovely by stashia stark this is the first book in the kingdom of lies series and guys this book was so much fun so much fun i honestly had like the best time reading this book i think i gave it a 4.5 or a 4.75 I don't know it's definitely in between there maybe a 4.5 to be honest now is it a fantasy romance with a super unique plot super unique world building and just the best writing ever no but did i have such a fun time reading this book and i just couldn't put it down yes and because of that it's rated high in my opinion just because it honestly it was just such a good time it was fast-paced it was action-packed we were sort of always moving settings, which I really liked. Like we were in so many different scenarios, so many different settings. There was good enemies to lovers. It was just such an enjoyable read. It's also a dual point of view book. So basically this girl comes from this like very small town and there's a few people within this town that are born with magical abilities. But what you have to do if you're born with magical abilities is you have to give your magic and your power up to the gods and they are actually doing you a favor because when you give them your power or your magic they are protecting you from the fey so there's like fey that kind of border their land and yeah they've been told their whole lives that that's what they need to do to protect their land etc and that's really all i can kind of tell you without spoiling anything for you just know that i definitely highly rate this book and i definitely recommend this book especially if you are searching for a fun fast-paced action-packed enemies to lovers they're not super enemies to be quite honest with you like they're definitely more banter and bickering than like actual enemies but i still enjoyed it nonetheless and it was just so much fun there were so many scenes in this book that i was honestly like smiling at. i was having so much fun reading it and it's just one of those books that makes you really remember why you love to read so much do you know what i mean so yeah great book highly recommend okay and then i read love story by Lindsay kelk this is like a rom-com it is a contemporary romance which is normally not my genre however i definitely really really enjoyed this book to be quite honest like a lot surprisingly i was in a really romance i think mood when i was reading this which definitely helped my perception of it yeah it was a really good time and also I just love the book cover. I think this is so cute. It's set in this town in the UK, so it's set in the UK. And our main girl, what was her name? Rosie? Sophie. She is a school teacher. However, she's actually one of the most popular, famous romance authors. Like maybe think like an Emily Henry or something like that. However, she actually uses a pen name because she doesn't want anyone to know that she's the one writing these books not because she's ashamed or kind of she is kind of ashamed of like the romance genre and because her parents don't really respect that genre like her family works in the book slash book editing slash book publishing industry and both her parents really really don't like the romance genre they think it's stupid da 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 and the kind of books that she's writing is sort of like more rom-com kind of more like some smut included as well so maybe more like smutty romance that she's writing and then our main guy, Joe, he also works in the book industry. He actually works for the same company that publishes her books. So in the beginning, when they kind of meet, 
he's sort of talking shit about her book and about that genre and things like that and so she's obviously a little bit like bothered with him because that's her book like she writes that genre she loves that genre and she just doesn't like that so many people hate and disrespect that genre this book is very funny and also very self-aware like the author makes a lot of remarks about the romance genre and she does it through the characters that don't like the romance genre and it's funny it's self-aware it has a lot of just great one-liners like it's just it's a very fun light-hearted book and i would definitely recommend reading this maybe when it's the summer you can honestly finish this in one day if you were to be at the beach like it moves super fast there's no really boring bits and it's definitely more of like a closed door romance and yeah it was just a really fun time like it had me giggling it was funny it has a lot of references if you like books that reference a lot of pop culture or they reference like other books or other movies or whatever it may be you would definitely enjoy this book this book is full of references to other things which i personally really enjoyed i forgot what i initially rated it in my reading vlog but my current feelings towards it is that it is a 3.75 moving on to my only five star read this month which is none other than bear town by frederick bachman this is so good like such a good book and it's essentially about this very small struggling town in sweden and all this town really has going for it is ice hockey like that is their major sport they're known for their junior hockey team and it's really like the town's only hope for success to be quite honest like it's what the town really takes pride in now prior to reading this book if you had told me the synopsis of this book and that i would have given it a five star i would probably have been like that's just not something that i would give a five star and i'm so wrong and the reason i think i thought that was because it really does center around ice hockey and this very small town and just kind of what ice hockey means to this town like it's more than just a sport it's more than a game like it is the heartbeat of bear town and i live in new zealand so i just want to say we do not play ice hockey here i have no idea how ice hockey works like it is just not a sport that we play here because this book very much revolves around ice hockey and like the team members and the dynamics between them and like the games and the lead up to the games <laughs> like it would just not seem like it's my thing but this book is just so human it's honestly hard to explain just how good this book is and until you read it i don't think you'll get it this book is essentially just about human nature and what people do when they're faced in dilemmas and consequences and what it really means to be a good person and also standing up to your friends and doing the right thing and it's just so good so 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 good something that i really loved about this book and i think i said it in my reading vlog was that this book not only focuses on the children who are like 15 14 15 something like that i think they're 15 but it also focuses on the parents of those children so you get the struggles of both the 15 year olds and then also the struggles of the adults which is really nice just because it's so human in that way like you can just see how different people of different ages and different backgrounds and social classes and all that stuff like just how each person can kind of have their own struggles oh, this book was so good honestly so phenomenal and i just don't think i'm doing it justice when i explain it so i definitely recommend you guys pick this book up it is such a good read and just very emotional something quite brutal happens in this book and it sort of divides the town and so because it's a very small town when it's divided you know it's like which side are you on who are you siding with and i really don't want to talk about it too much because i don't want to give any spoilers but please just read this book it is honestly phenomenal it's uplifting it's heartbreaking it made me feel so many emotions the writing 10 out of 10 the way frederick bachman can just like evoke these emotions like i honest to god was on the brink of tears so many times like he'll just say these sentences and i'm just like how are you writing this and why are you getting into my heart so much like oh so good highly 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 recommend and then i read beastly beauty by jennifer donnelly now this is a beauty and the beast reimagination slash retelling but it's kind of flipped around so the girl her name is arabella she's stuck and trapped in this castle and she has been for a long long time and the guy that breaks in his name is beau he is the one that kind of has to save her from this curse and only if he loves her for who she truly is so it's very much beauty and the beast but you know obviously just reimagined in a different way this book was 
so good in the way that it just felt like I was watching a Disney movie. Like it was very comforting. The writing was very comforting. Definitely reads like a children's book, kind of. So it was very good in the way that it was like super comforting and it felt like a Disney movie, but it was just very underwhelming. Like it definitely had a cool twist on the whole Beauty and the Beast idea, but it was just slightly underwhelming, you know? I don't know. I just wanted it to be a bit more. This book would have been so good. Like I would have absolutely loved this book had it just given me a bit more, but it didn't, unfortunately. But nonetheless, it was still really good writing, a very comforting read. And I would definitely say if you are maybe like 12, 13, 14, that age group, or if you have like daughters or nieces or whatever, or nephews, whoever, I do think they would really enjoy this book and it would be a very good book for their age group. The dialogue is quite funny. Sometimes the dialogue, like from the main guy, like it was trying to be funny, but it wasn't very funny. <laughs> it's hard to explain because I did really enjoy this book, but at the same time, it just left me wanting more. So yeah, I think this book is like a 3.25 to a 3.5. Okay, and then I read Caravel by Stephanie Garber. So the funny thing is I've already read the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy and that trilogy is a spin-off from this trilogy. So I actually really know a lot of things that will happen in this series because I've read that series first. Hi guys, my camera died and I really forgot what I was saying. I definitely know I was talking about Caravel. So basically our main girl in this book, Scarlett, she's dreamed of going to Caravel for like her whole entire life. It's like this magical once a year sort of like carnival like event that happens and you can only go if you receive an invitation from Legend. And Legend is the mysterious host of this party. No one knows who he is, no one knows what he looks like. He's just this mystery man. But one year after I think I think she's been like writing letters to him for about seven years. He finally responds to her and he invites her to come to Caraval and play the game. So basically Caraval is like a five night game and it's this game where they use real humans as props in the game. I'm explaining this so badly, but basically it's almost like a treasure hunt. <laughs> Uh, how do I explain it? It's this very very magical game and everything is not what it seems and there's a lot of strange things that happen in Caraval and you can't really tell if it's a figment of your own imagination or if it's actually happening. That's sort of the best way I can describe it. It's very magical. The writing is so good. Like if you love lyrical writing, descriptive writing, just a beautiful made up world, you would definitely love Caraval. Like I would love to attend Caraval. Even though it's a little bit spooky in some ways, I would love to attend it. The descriptions of the dresses. Oh, I love when an author can like beautifully describe dresses, like especially if they're like unique and like the patterns and the lace or whatever it is. Stephanie Garber can write about dresses like no other and Scarlett wears some very cool sort of magical dresses in this book. So that was really fun. Caraval's really fun. The writing's really good. It's magical. But for some reason, the book fell a tiny bit flat for me, which is strange because the concept is really good, the writing's good, but I don't know. It just felt like a little bit flat for me. The second half of the book was definitely like way better and it picked up and it was so interesting and I was like turning the pages quickly to see what's gonna happen. But I don't know, like I wasn't, I wasn't sold on Scarlett and Julian. So Julian's like the love interest in this book. I wasn't really sold on him and their relationship just kind of felt like one dimensional to me. I don't know. It's weird. Like I wish I liked this a lot more than I did. I definitely did enjoy it and I think it's like a 3.5 or a 3.75, but I definitely didn't enjoy it as much as Once Upon a Broken High. I will definitely be continuing the series like for sure just because I've heard that the second book is so much better and also the second book has a character that features in, well, he doesn't feature, he's like a main character in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. So I'm really, really, really excited to read that book and see him again and just see him in a different setting. Like I'm so excited for Donatella's book, which is legendary, that's the second book. So yeah, for sure we'll be continuing the series. No, I forgot to mention the second book that I DNF'd this year was on my Kindle and it's the first Zodiac Academy book. Zodiac, The Awakening, I think it's called. 
I have tried to read this book I think three times and at first I softly DNF'd it but now it's a hard DNF because I just don't the writing is just very bad and I know that it's like a binge worthy book a lot of people love it because it's so entertaining but I just can't get past the writing like it's just it's it's not my thing but I'm really happy for whoever loves it and I'm sort of jealous because people that love it love it and I want to be included in that love but I just don't feel the love towards it so yeah it's a DNF also I just want to say I'm so sorry if this is like a five star series for you just know that my mom who I love and respect more than any person in this world like she's everything to me this is like her favorite series so it hurts me to say that because I want it to be a five star book for me because she loves it so much but it wasn't but I think she liked the second and third book the most but I think she like loved loved it from this book and I did really like it I don't know why I just felt the need to say that and mom if you're watching it I love you so much thank you for recommending the series to me I definitely really like it maybe not as much as you like it but we'll see but yeah love you i know for a fact she's watching she watches every single one of my videos she does not miss it if it takes me like more than usual to upload a video she'll message me saying where's your video so yeah i love you mom thank you for watching <laughs> okay and then the final book that i read in october is the paris novel by ruth raquel i adored this book i really 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 adored this book it's a bit of a slow book and i think if you watched my i think it was two videos ago it was like a bookish weekend in my life as an introvert sort of style of video you'll see my thoughts and opinions as i was reading this book so live reactions this is a book for the foodies like i loved the food descriptions in this book like this book has so many descriptions of food and like nice restaurants in paris it's about this girl stella who is a very kind of like creature of habit person she likes routine she sticks to her rules she doesn't venture out she's not adventurous she lives her day with a very organized schedule like 9 a.m breakfast 9 30 to 10 a.m walk to work 10 a.m start like it's a very structured way that she lives she's not adventurous she doesn't try new things that kind of life and she doesn't have a very close relationship with her mom in fact she has a very toxic relationship with her mom and when her mom passes away the only thing that she leaves her with is eight thousand dollars and basically a note saying please use this money to go to paris so that's kind of what she does so she uses that money and she ventures off to paris and at first when she gets there she's like this is a horrible mistake what have i done like I, this is so out of my comfort zone and then she goes to this restaurant and in that restaurant she meets someone called jules and jules is like the 70 year old french man who's so full of life and so full of wisdom and just has lived a very very interesting life and he sort of helps her experience paris the way that she should be experiencing it so eating good food and going to the nice restaurants and essentially this book is really just about making the most of life and enjoying life and enjoying food and yeah that's kind of like the whole nature of this book to be quite honest this book definitely has a plot by the way like there's definitely a theme and you know we're going somewhere with the story and essentially the plot follows her wanting to find out more about this painting that she sees not so much the painter but the person that's been painted and so it was really fun kind of going through her adventures of finding out the story behind the girl that was in the painting and just more about her this book is definitely mostly vibes not much plot so it's kind of hard to talk about it but just know that i absolutely adored it if you're someone that loves descriptions of food descriptions of architecture descriptions of art you would definitely really 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 enjoy this book it had really nice writing and i gave it a four star and the reason i didn't really rank it higher it's just because there's this one thing that happens in the beginning of the book that really threw me off guard and i just wish it didn't happen i just don't think that particular thing needed to happen like we could have done something else to talk about our main girl's kind of rough past or like the trauma that she went through but yeah there was just this one scene that i really 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 didn't like and i wish we just had anything else besides it to be honest but yeah overall it's a four star book for me every time a restaurant was mentioned or maybe a food i haven't heard of before i was googling it so it was a very fun interactive reading experience because i was very much like kind of reading it slowly and i was looking up anything that i didn't know or like looking up certain streets in paris that she was in so i could like better 
visionist so it was a really fun reading experience i definitely recommend it if you like books like this but if you need a plot i do think you'll find this boring so i just want to put that out there okay guys and those are the books that i read in october i hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you got any five star books this month i really hope you guys did and yeah thank you so much for watching my video i will see you next time bye